So today I'm going to be talking us through a recent news article where a 33-year-old female lost her life from a gunshot wound in a church parking lot the following day from the service. So this occurred on a Monday and it occurred at Maroon Park Church in Holland, Michigan. What I'm going to do is take you through the story and lead us in some learning from this incident. So Tragedy struck when a 33-year-old female was shot and killed just after 8 p.m. Remember, this is the day after the church services at the Maroon Park Church, as I mentioned, in Michigan. Now, the investigation is fascinating here because what we do know is that two vehicles pulled into the parking lot next to each other. One of those vehicles then started to open fire It killed the Cassandra, the 33-year-old female, and it injured the driver who was the passenger. So unknown what the motive was at this stage, but we do know that these two people pulled into a parking lot and parked next to each other. There must have been some type of relationship between them, no matter what it was. Uh, What we also know, which is fascinating here, is that one of the vehicles with the injured person, they chose to drive Cassandra to the hospital rather than call 911 and wait for emergency services. And again, I'm drawing a little bit of an inference in there as to why would that person have driven to the hospital rather than call and wait for 911? It's a tough question. If that was me, I'm trying to think if someone that I knew and loved, I believe, needed medical assistance immediately and there wasn't a paramedic on scene, what would I do? Would I drive them to the hospital or would I wait to try and do some type of CPR, pack the wound while I call 911? But it's a unique part of the story there. And the information that is known around this assailant is that they are a Hispanic male. So we've got two vehicles. The day after church services park alongside each other, one vehicle opens fire, kills 33-year-old Cassandra, injures the driver of the car who then drives to the hospital. Cassandra was later pronounced dead on arrival, and then the male um, does survive. The Hispanic male is still at large. So what can we take away from this incident, Ben, which is going to help us? Well, I've said for many, many, many times now that Physical Security 101 is protection of our perimeter. And then most often what tends to happen is that when we're not at a church, our parking lots are vulnerable because most churches do not have gates on their church. So we are vulnerable by nature. And we're also seen as a little bit of a neutral location. Now, I don't know if there was gang activity in here. I don't know if there was a conflict between the two men, which is why one opened fire on the other. What we do know is that two cars went in, parked next to each other, and then one of them opened gang fire, or gunfire, sorry. But we need to acknowledge that our church parking lots are susceptible to crimes when we are not there, may be considered a neutral venue. So let's look at four key takeaways then. So the first one is around having heightened awareness because there will be heightened fears. I don't know about you, if my church body got to hear that only a day after the church service that someone was shot and killed in our parking lot, our members, our attendees, our congregation, they would be saying to our security leaders, hey, will it happen on a Monday? Could it happen on a Sunday when we're at church? What are we doing? I don't feel safe anymore. So we do have to acknowledge that when these type of incidents happen, there will be sort of enhanced, escalated, heightened fears, if you like, as to what happened on a Monday evening at 8 p.m. Could it happen on a Sunday? So it leads me on to the second one about making sure that we are offering people support and services. I did a webinar yesterday where I spoke about um, getting ready for the holiday season. And in that, I said, make sure we have crisis teams available. And someone said to me, uh, what, is, what is a crisis team and when should we have one? Well, it's great in this type of situation because 
there is going to be people in your community that are going to be affected by someone lost their life in the church parking lot. There's going to be pastoral care. There's some people who are going to be struggling with that. So we do need to offer support. So think about crisis teams. Think about what does that support look like for those in your community? And also there could be family members of Cassandra who might come to a church and see that as the sign as to where she lost her life and where she maybe ascended to, to heaven. They're going to come there. They're going to be challenged. They're going to need your help and support. So the next thing that I want to say is about having vigilance in our parking lots. Now, my good friend, Carl Chin, his data showed for many years that most church crimes, most church crimes start in our parking lots. So we have to remain vigilant during our Sunday services when we are there. But we also we also need to remain vigilant when the church is not in service. So this is where our cameras, our access management, controlling the perimeter, putting gates to our church. That's when it really helps us. We've got to understand a lot of church crimes are starting in the parking lot. So let's remain vigilant, make sure that we're aware of the threats, of the dangers, and we know how to respond. And then the last thing that I want to say about this incident with a key takeaway, and I say this with a bit of smile on my face, knowing that someone tragically lost their life. But when these type of incidents happen, you as the safety leader, you have a small window, a small window to educate your leaders and try and get your points made while they are worried, while they are concerned, because in a week, two weeks, four weeks, they're going to start getting normalcy bias. It'll never happen here. They're going to start getting back to their denial. So you have a short window to tell them about this incident and say, this happened at a local church. What would we do if it happened here? How can we prevent it? How can we support our community? So I really do want to make the point, in a bad way, seize the opportunity and use these type of case studies to engage your security leaders, your people that are overseeing your programs, your pastors, ministry staff, whoever it is, seize the opportunities because in one or two weeks, they're going to go back to normalcy bias. It'll never happen here. One or two weeks, they're going to go back to denial. It won't happen here. So there's four key takeaways from this story. Have heightened fears. Make sure that we're providing care to these people. We're going to offer them support, pastoral care, crisis teams, whatever it might look like. We're going to remain vigilant in our parking lots, knowing, knowing that most church crimes start in our parking lot, and we are going to seize the opportunity. We are going to tell people within our leadership team, hey, what if this happened here? This has happened at a local church. We need to make sure that we are planning, we're prepared, and we're ready for those days. So I just want to finish off by talking about the decision decks. Maybe some of you already have a deck of decision decks. Uh, we started these this year and they've blessed so many ministries. They are just simply critical thinking scenario drills with six different films currently for House of Worship. Most people pick up the card in a meeting and say, hey, Simon, how would you respond? And they'll read the scenario um, or within their safety team, they might get a group of people together, read a card, and then all discuss how they will respond. So I know these cards are going to bless your ministry, and you can scan that QR code um, on the screen, or you can follow the link below to check out the six decision decks that we have, conflict de-escalation, crisis intervention, threat assessment, suspicious behavior, and uh, uh, medical response. Please take a look at those. I know they're going to help bless your ministry. But for now, you stay safe. You have a blessed day. I'm Simon Osmo, and I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.